New this hour, the race against time continues in Kabul. The White House still insisting they'll have all U.S. forces out by the end of the month, but why some say this crisis is far from over. As COVID numbers continue to climb in the Ohio Valley, a local emergency room doctor has a message for people in the area. I have that story coming up. I'm Dylan Cleveland and tonight we're looking into why residents in one community continue to deal with flooding issues from this creek every time it rains. News 9 is everywhere. This is News 9 at 6. COVID cases are on the rise throughout the country here in the Ohio Valley. Hospital officials say staffs are being worked to their limits. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rich Pierce and I'm Kate Davison. They fear things are only going to get worse. News 9's Jamie Banker has more. A Wheeling Hospital emergency room doctor says they're seeing spikes of COVID right now that they say are even worse than ones they've seen in the past. Dr. William Brocklehurst says he's seen more COVID patients in the last few weeks than he's seen in months. Most are unvaccinated and the numbers are trending younger and sicker. We didn't see many 20 and 30 year olds, let alone kids under 18 last year. Honestly, I don't know if that had to do with staying out of school and college, uh, but they're the population we're seeing. Brocklehurst says that age group is a major concern for a few reasons. He worries about kids being put in classrooms together without masks and fears things could get even worse if the virus starts spreading in schools. We don't have a pediatric ICU here. If a child comes in and needs oxygen, if their COVID is bad enough, they need to be shipped out. And the uh, tertiary care centers like Pittsburgh and Morgantown are already strained. There's going to come a point where we won't be able to transfer anyone out, and that scares the heck out of them. Brocklehurst says the staffs of hospitals across the country are spread thin right now, including at Wheeling Hospital. So he's asking people to take precautions to try to get the numbers back under control again. Go back to what we did last year. Try to socially distance. Please wear a mask. These are all layers of protection, just like speed limits and seat belts and airbags. They all work together and get vaccinated. In Ohio County, I'm Jamie Baker for News 9. Today, as President Biden updates the nation on the evacuation timeline in Afghanistan and several of his top officials brief members of Congress, there is breaking news that the director of the CIA was in Kabul yesterday for secret face-to-face -face talks with the de facto leader of the Taliban. Alice Barr has the latest from Washington. President Biden addressing the nation today amid calls from all sides to explain why he intends to stick to his August 31st deadline to have all U.S. troops out of Afghanistan. Sources telling NBC News he's asked for contingency plans in case the situation changes. The decision not to extend now comes amid intense pressure at home and abroad. Close allies in the G7 group of nations urged President Biden to change course in an emergency meeting this morning. So did lawmakers in both parties after a classified briefing today. The mission must be extended. Uh, and we have to do what's necessary to get people out. But the Taliban has warned of consequences should American troops stay beyond the end of the month. NBC News has confirmed the head of the CIA met secretly with the Taliban's de facto leader yesterday. I think this is an encouraging sign that they're moving forward with doing everything possible. The U.S. and allies evacuated more than 21,000 people over the past 24 hours, a new record. That includes American citizens and at-risk Afghans, many of whom are being processed at this center near Virginia's Dulles Airport. It was a nightmare. It was um, really horrible. It was very scary seeing, trying to escape from the Taliban. But for the thousands of Afghans who remain trapped, the window is narrowing and hope may be slipping away. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. West Virginia State Senator Ryan Weld served in Afghanistan as a U.S. Air Force intelligence officer and worked alongside many Afghans who were trying to flee the country. Right now, Weld is working to help one of those people get out. The man who goes by Mohammed R was an active member for the provincial government when Weld was there. He, along with his wife and five children, are trying to leave the country before that August 31st deadline hits. He told Weld through an interpreter that he's worried about his safety and the safety of his family. Taliban, are, are you receiving threats from the Taliban? Yes, 
دغه هر شیبه چې مونږ د ښار کې وځو ورته مونږ ریسک احساس کوو ویلې د فضا انوایرمنټ کې خپل خطرناک ده Sir, uh, the situation is very dangerous, uh, even we can't uh, go out from the home. Mohammed says the Taliban is threatening Afghans to not leave the country, and they even have a checkpoint set up outside his house. Weld has personally written letter of recommendation to help Mohammed and his family. Weld says many veterans and current military members are doing the same for others throughout the country. We'll update you as we continue to follow this story. Last week, when storms swept through the Ohio Valley, some residents were forced to deal with severe flooding. In Amsterdam, people say it's been a problem for some time now when big storms hit. Your sign still in Cleveland looks at why it hasn't been fixed. Residents along Township Road 275 in Amsterdam are fed up with the problems they're facing. Every time it rains, this creek overflowing, creating safety issues. Last week, the water was the highest that we have seen it here. Um, down by the bridge, by the state route, the water was out of the creek up to my neck height. I'm 5'5", five five, so that's probably about five foot out of the creek. Our road is closed a couple times a year due to the high water. The state route, um, twice in the last three years, it has gone over and caused them to close the road. Amsterdam Mayor Jim Phillips says the floodwaters are a result of two main issues. I think there are several variables that, that are causing us problems. The first one being, you know, part of our town is in a floodplain. Um, the second problem that's a huge problem is our creek. You know, they haven't been dredged out in probably 50 or 60 years. Uh, there's a lot of dead trees in our creek. Um, a lot of silt and build up. And Stone says each time flooding occurs, the damage becomes worse. Now she would like to see it fixed before it becomes a larger safety hazard. Everybody I've talked to on my road had water in their basements. Um, my neighbor, their vehicle got stuck in the high water. Their vehicle is now totaled. We went to Jefferson County Commissioner's Chairman Thomas Graham to see what could be done. This continues to be a problem for residents, so is the county in any place to assist them? Yes, I spoke with John Parker in charge of emergency management. He's going to come to the commissioner's meeting requesting $10,000 out of emergency money, and hopefully the commissioners will vote to do that. He can hire a private company to clean it up from the outside on the banks and reach into the creek. You cannot go into the creek uh, against the law because of our, our, only Army Corps of Engineers can do that. And do you see a timetable for when this project could could get started? Oh, within weeks, um, not months, but within weeks. As far as the portion of the creek flowing underneath State Route 164. She says that she has uh, reached out to multiple agencies, including ODOT. So do you think that the state does have the resources uh, to, to fix this? Yeah, the state definitely has the resources, but the question becomes what don't, what doesn't the state do because they use the money on this, uh, this exact problem that we have here. Stone plans to continue her efforts in finding a resolution before flooding begins to affect lives. I currently have a petition, so if anyone in the Amsterdam community is interested in signing it, please let me know. I have roughly 40 signatures at this point, and I intend to get more. And Olivia Stone plans to present her petition to the Jefferson County Commissioners in the coming weeks. Reporting in Jefferson County, I'm Dylan Cleland for News 9. Coming up, a local man facing federal charges in the January 6th Capitol riot sees a second court appearance today. What he's pleading after the break. It's all about those summer temperatures. It's feeling like the middle of summer, that's for sure. We're going to continue with this trend of above average temperatures. For not only a couple more days, but several more days. Let's talk about when it could possibly come to an end in my extended forecast. Coming up. And stay connected with News 9 wherever you go. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check us out online. Just more reasons why News 9 is everywhere. You are watching News 9 at 6 with Rich Pierce, Kate Davison, and meteorologist Nathan Schutt. This is News 9 at 6. Here's a live look at the Highlands from the lens of Tower Cam 9 atop the Robinson Auto Group. 
A man facing federal charges in the January 6th Capitol riots entered not guilty pleas before a federal magistrate in Washington via a teleconference hearing today. Steve Billingsley of Richmond, who you see here in this clip, as he left federal court in Wheeling last week, allegedly live streamed himself during the riot and is charged with knowingly entering or remaining in any restricted building or grounds without lawful authority. He's also charged with disorderly conduct in a restricted building or grounds. It's all part of the largest criminal prosecution in U.S. history. Billingsley waived his right to a speedy trial. He must also relinquish firearms, not use or possess narcotics that are not prescribed, submit to drug testing, and not obstruct the tests. He has more than 60 guns, and his attorney argued he should be allowed to keep them, but federal magistrate Robin Merriweather disagreed. A status hearing is set for September 16th in Washington, D.C. District Court. High pressure is in control across the area and it's a clockwise flow so it's pulling in all the warmth and pushing it right into our region. Hot temperatures are present across the region but even more heat going to build and move on in. How many more days of sunshine and warmth do we have? The answer coming up. The FDA's full approval of the Pfizer vaccine on Monday led several people in Columbus, Ohio to get a COVID-19 vaccination that same day. This was the scene at the Columbus Public Health COVID-19 vaccine clinic Monday afternoon. Among those there were Christian Spetz, Alex Todd and Jeremiah, Sh Jeremiah Sharp. All three of them got their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. They said the FDA's full approval was what they were waiting for. Jeremiah Sharp is only 12 years old, but he said the full approval for those 16 and up made him feel better about getting the shot too. Um, it definitely like gave that it was like 99% yes I'm gonna go get it and that was just like 100 yeah I will go get it it definitely did feel a lot more confident in it for sure pretty much all the people I've talked to that didn't want the vaccine have just been waiting for the approval all my family's safe now they have the vaccine I want to be safe with them I want to do stuff with them and this is helping me get to that point Columbus Public Health Commissioner Dr. Mashika Roberts says she is optimistic the FDA approval will increase vaccination rates in the capital city. Meteorologist Brian Ivey, now with your Severe Weather Team 9 forecast. As we look at our latest cameras across the area, what are we seeing? A lot of blue sky, that's for sure. Not much in the way of cloud cover wherever you are. And we haven't had a ton of these days. Just a beautiful, widespread, sea for miles and miles type of sunny days. So enjoy that aspect of it. Yes, I know, maybe you want to stay in the AC a little bit. Temperatures well into the middle 80s, still 91 in Columbus, 88 degrees in Chicago. Notice the cooler temperatures in Wisconsin. That's due to a round of storms moving through. But it got hot today. I'll show you how hot in just a bit. Very toasty. These dew points in this, the Gulf Coast area are well into the lower 70s at least. So when you factor that in, it feels like it's about 103 to about 107 degrees across the deep south here. Miami is cooler. We're in the middle 80s. We're one of the cooler spots. It is a very hot pattern and we're going to continue to see this last throughout the next few days or so. Make it several days. It's going to last through the weekend overall. Not much of a change from day to day. Here's the Bel Air time lapse. You can see that we did have a ton of sunshine. Ooh, a nice buggy chilling out on the camera there for a second. Overall, wall to wall blue skies. Just a couple isolated clouds is really all we saw. And another bug. All right, we're getting a little bit of action on our time lapse there. If the clouds aren't going to show off for us. Let's go to Wisconsin here and, and Iowa. And this round of storms, it's moving through and pushing towards the Chicagoland area and into Michigan. Potent stuff. It looks like it's hitting towards our area, right? It looks like it's kind of pushing like this, but it's going to probably run into some high pressure and dip a little bit towards the south. A big time heat and humidity is going to continue to try to stream on in a little bit as well. Not too much going on across the west. High pressure and control. This is kind of that main system that we're watching that will just kind of barely hit. St. Clairsville looking nice, a little bit of haze, but overall just full sunshine. Here's how hot we got today. Officially in Wheeling 87, most of the other portions of the area about 88, 89. Not many hitting 90, but you could definitely see 90s in other spots of Ohio for sure. 
And with the dew points factored in, in the upper 60s to low 70s, yeah, it was feeling very toasty with those heat indices. And it will continue to be very uncomfortable with high humidity values through the day and or through the week and into the weekend as well, getting to that oppressive instant sweat level and a decent amount of moisture in the atmosphere as well. As you see here, pretty high levels. So where we do see some showers and thunderstorms pop, that's definitely all the energy needed for some very heavy downpours. I don't think we're gonna to see too much of fog tonight. I think just those river valley locations. So if you're outside of there, you should be good to go. The fog cast, you're not picking up on too much activity, but just five, six, seven, eight a.m. That's when the chance is. 69 degrees for tonight. Pretty calm out there. Otherwise, clear skies. Lots of sunshine developing into partly cloudy skies by the afternoon hours tomorrow. 90 degrees. We could see some of those showers and thunderstorms that are going to move down with that system at least clip us. I think the bulk of it's going to stay mainly west. Feeling like the middle 90s throughout the day tomorrow, and we're going to continue with those upper 80s for highs and feeling like the 90s for the next few days with those hit and miss spotty thunderstorms going through the weekend. Coming up, a large police presence this morning in Smithfield Township. The latest on the FBI investigation coming up tonight at 10 and 11. Medical Center Sports Desk. Rob Metzger, now with News 9 Sports. Good evening. Each Tuesday night at 6 throughout the high school football season, we'll name the Bordis and Bordis High School Football Team of the Week. Tonight, we unveil our Week 1 honoree. Prior to hosting Division I Olin Tangy Liberty, Steubenville Big Red coach Rena Sukach called it the best opener in his 39 years as head coach. And his squad was certainly up to the challenge. The Big Red offense racked up 400 plus yards, nearly split between passing and running, and the defense came up with five turnovers. It all added up to a 22-7 victory, earning Big Red our first Team of the Week award. We never got it out of the blocks before, but uh, we'll take it. Our players, uh, you know, it, it, it proves when you watch the film the next day how much hard work and enthusiasm and playing with a passion covers a lot, up a lot of mistakes because we made a lot of mistakes Friday night. But the, the will to win and, and just, just grinding and, and keep going and keeping after it uh, helped us to a great victory. Big Red, now winners in 19 of the past 20 season openers, has quickly turned the page to a live Thursday Night Lights broadcast on Fox 9 against New Philadelphia. They've kicked our butt the last two years. And uh, so if we have any any pride, if we have any, uh, if we have any, any, any pride in ourselves at all, uh, we'll stand up and, uh, and have a better week this week. We are Big Red! Borders and Borders, WTOV9 High School Football Team of the Week. All the year has always favored the violins are blue. And the gentle sons of Harvard to the crimson rose are true. So true, we will own our color splendor, nor honor shall they lack. While the high school stands defender of the crimson and the black. Big Red New Philadelphia on the Bordis and Bordis Thursday Night Lights live on Fox 9 at 7 o'clock as well as on WTOV9.com and the WTOV News 9 Facebook page live pregame at 6.30 will kick things off. Friday night St. Clair's will host Wheeling Park. That will be live on MeTV at 7.30. And tonight at 11 our team previews continue with the Lindsley Cadets. Coming up, meteorologist Brian Ivey will have your 24-hour forecast after the break. As we go throughout tonight, dipping back to around 70 degrees or so, a little fog potential in the River Valley locations as we go throughout the early morning. Then mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. We're going to rise up all the way to 90 degrees. Let's give you a look at what we expect going well into the future with our extended 15 day forecast. We are looking at conditions staying very toasty into the weekend, cooling off a little bit next week, and then it'll be a little up and down after that. No real cool weather on the horizon and plenty of that humidity also. And that will, will do it for this edition of News 9 at 6. Thank you for watching. You can always look for the latest updates on our website, W2V9.com. We'll see you right back here at 11. Hope you had a good day. Have a great evening.